Hi folks, Caroline here from SassyTownhouseLiving.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking to Dr. Laurel Mellon. She's the author of The Stress Eating Solution, a proven neuroscience method for ending overeating. And I wanna just give you a quick bio before I bring her out. She is a New York Times bestselling author, a health psychologist, and also an associate clinical professor. She's also the leader of the brain-based health movement, mobilizing individuals, universities, and corporations to access the neural pathways in the brain to rapidly get from stress to joy. She's been a faculty member for more than 30 years at UCSF. She, her work has been featured on public television, Oprah Today, Good Morning America, U.S. News and World Report, Time, The Conversation, Psychology Today, and so many more. Dr. Mellon is also introducing to us today a new mobile app that she's been working on so vigorously, and it's called Brain-Based Health by EBT. And I had the privilege to be able to use this app, and I absolutely love it, and you'll see why very shortly. Now, what this app does is it helps readers use the tools in real time to stop craving and binge eating at the time that urges arise. So today we're super excited to be able to talk to Dr. Mellon, and thank you again so much for joining us. So <laughs> Dr. Mellon, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to talk to you about your work because it's revolutionary and I know that folks are going to be super excited to hear about what we're going to be talking about today. So as I explained in your intro, let's talk about your book first. Now, this book is called The Stress Eating Solution, A Proven Neuroscience Method for Ending Overeating, and it's available as only an ebook. Is that correct? No, it's a printed book and an ebook. Wonderful. So, of course, we'll have the links running across the screen as well as in the description below, folks. So make sure you check it out. I'm sure it's available on Amazon. Right, doctor? Wonderful. OK, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is everybody I talk to mostly is super stressed out. And, you you know, we we had a wonderful conversation to kind of give us a jump start yesterday. And you were telling me some amazing information about the statistics on just how stressed out people are. So I want to touch on that. But I also want to touch on um, what motivated you to write your book, you know, what brought you from here to there, and just let folks know and get a little bit of understanding. And we can unpack some of like why you wrote this book where the need comes from and why are people so stressed out <laughs> well you sure hit it stress is the number one problem and some of us don't even know how stressed we are because we're used to it everyone around us is stressed mm -hmm. our stress might show up is that we're just numb or that we're on a constant high of being overly busy or tripping out to to technology as well as being anxious depressed and, and such so some of us don't even know how stressed we are the stress level is going up because we have a hunter-gatherer brain and it's not used to the speed of change, the information overload, the global threats, and just so much change going on that the brain says, I think I'm in stress overload all the time. And that's the point, is it's been a game changer. I've been in the health field for almost 40 years and it's been a game changer that in the last 20, but particularly the last 10 years, we passed a threshold where the thinking brain cannot process all this stress. Mm -hmm. And what the brain does, it goes from being dominated by our thoughts and really careful oversight and feeling connected and making great decisions. The stress overload that we're all facing is now in the lower brain, in the emotional brain, the unconscious mind. The circuits there that determine whether we're going to move through stress back to a state of connection and well-being and make great decisions and take really good care of ourselves or we get triggered and we get stuck down where the reptilian brain is in charge so the average when i started many years ago working on emotional brain training the preparation for these this book the stress eating solution and its companion the stress overload solution we were kind of running on a five-point system of of a set, a set point at one where you're all together and you're in joy and you're resilient 
uh, it was moving more toward about a two, which is not quite as good. Five is the most stress overload where you're just completely overwhelmed and can't even budge or are over busy. And we're now running as a nation right around four. Okay, this is definitely stressed. This is the habit of the brain. And when the habit of the brain is to be in stress, it causes 90% of health problems. It also, it also causes us to uh, be in a state where when the brain's in stress, the thinking brain, you know, our rational brain goes offline and we, we defer to the emotional brain where it's just reflexive. We go on automatic pilot. We keep saying, why do I keep doing that? You know, why do I keep overeating? Why do I keep overreacting to my children? Why do I keep procrastinating at work? And it's not our fault and no one's talking about it. So what I decided to do is to, we have obviously we train psychologists and physicians and other, other health professionals in this method and we have a website and a community, but I decided to put it in a book form so that anyone could pick up a 30 day plan to learn how to take charge of this amazingly powerful transformative emotional brain and an app to go with it so you can just take it with you everywhere you go and in two minutes you can calm down that reptilian brain and be off and running feeling absolutely great about yourself and being really connected. Now we're going to dig into the app soon, but I want to talk to you about the book and, and let folks just get an understanding of what the book can, can offer them in conjunction with, you know, with the app. Um, let's unpack first what EBT is. So maybe you can explain what emotional based training is and what it has to do with overeating. Great. Okay. Two things. One, we were used to in the other age, the pre emotional brain age where the thinking brain, there wasn't so much overwhelming stress as the thinking brain was in charge that we could plan, decide, analyze, map out. And then whatever we decided to do, we could do. And we didn't understand that the real powerhouse of what controls us is not the conscious mind, but this unconscious mind with all of its circuits and pathways that go on automatic. Now that the, I mean, it's very sad, but the truth is we've got to deal with reality. And the reality is all of us. It's not just the people who had difficult childhoods or have had a lot of trauma. It's even harder for them. But the fact is all of us are stressed out. And what happens if we don't essentially do something about it and it's not getting time to relax or exercising or eating right all those things are good but the fact is it's the brain itself that's in stress and what's so magical about it is our hunter-gatherer ancestors would never have been able to survive we'd gone the way of the dinosaurs except that this brain the most important brain the powerhouse the fight-or-flight response brain is highly plastic in other words, we can change the wires that are unconscious, that are automatic. But this is the caveat. We can't do it by thinking, planning, or analyzing, which, of course, is our favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. We're even being mindfully aware. Because as soon as that brain goes into stress, the thinking brain goes offline, and then we start, you know, start ruminating and, and, and getting so controlling in our thoughts. But essentially, our thoughts are not working. What EBT is about is to say we have learned at, after how many years of research at the University of California, San Francisco, which is a huge mecca for stress research, that in fact, we can take a nice deep breath and have our thinking brain, this is our only hope, our prefrontal cortex right here is our only hope for control over our lives. And instead of having it try to be scattered with all these, you know, analyzing everything, having lists, being mindfully aware and all this, instead we could just say, the only thing that really matters is your emotional brain. And if your emotional brain is essentially in a state of connection and well-being, then you have access to the wisdom of the universe. You have access to using your thinking in a really helpful and actually transformative way and changing your own wires so you're more and more resilient. So let's take all the other things we could do with our thinking brain and go ahead and set them aside and instead the first priority when you wake up in the morning and throughout the day is to connect with your body which is where we experience our emotional brain, the powerhouse of how we respond in life. And if you're not feeling great, if you're not in this system of one, two, three, four, or five with stress levels feeling great, all you do is touch on the app and you use the natural resiliency pathway in the brain. 
and within two minutes or so, you're back to a state of connection. You say, wow, the sun is out now, and wow, I, I can work on my work project. I'm not so anxious. But you do two things. Number one, in that moment where you take time to really connect with yourself and not put everyone else and every deadline first, but first connect with yourself and then everything else will go better, in those two minutes, you not only essentially feel great just without any change in your external environment. You haven't gone on a walk, you haven't talked with a friend, you've talked with the deepest part of yourself and processed your emotions, but also you change your brain in two ways. Essentially, that resiliency pathway in the brain, the natural resiliency pathway from stress to joy, our evolutionary biology wants us to be in joy, and that's the state where we're chemically at our best and most likely to survive and thrive. You've not only strengthened that pathway, so it goes from being a little teeny little pathway in the brain that's kind of like a, you know, a little hiking trail, mm -hmm. to being essentially a huge highway so that that is dominant, so that whenever you get in stress, you begin to check in with yourself emotionally, and those tools have now created this beautiful pathway so it's easier to stay in that state of connection naturally and for longer. Now, how does the 30-day plan work? Well, what happened was, uh, you know, people of all types use this, this method because it's really not related to gender or to intelligence or to uh, race or to anything else. It's all this brain is the same for all of us. This emotional brain, the resiliency pathways are absolutely the same. And we, we got a lot more people who were kind of, you know, really, really healthy, happy. They just wanted to be ahead of the game with stress coming in. And they said, why don't you just give us a short course on this? Do the whole whole thing here so that if I want to, I can peruse the program and, and rewire some of the major circuits in my brain and do it right away. Do it real quickly. Okay. So what we did is I said, okay, let's give you a 30 day crash course in emotional brain training, how do you use your magnificent unconscious mind to help you out instead of to be a block. So the first few days people learn how to use the app. They learn how to spiral up to joy from any stress level. There's five different pathways in the brain. There's a psychiatrist at UCSF who's going through medical student and we teach EBT to the medical students at UCSF. So he says to me, he says, I just don't get EBT. Tell me more about it. And he says, finally he says, okay, I get it. And yeah, he's a psychiatrist. He said, stress management isn't one size fits all. There are five different levels of stress in the brain, a different brain areas in charge, the reptiles in charge down here, and the neocortex, the brilliant neocortex is up here. And so there's five different resiliency pathways. So if I have the full set of five pathways in my brain that I can get at, then I'm going to be able to move out of stress and unlock that stuck state of stress. So everyone stops, starts by really knowing how to use the app well. And then by that time, they're used to feeling great. And they notice that they get stuck sometimes. It's almost like there's a little, little, little block in their resiliency pathway, a little, little, little stopper in their resiliency pathway. And so when that happens, they say, wow, this tool still work, but I get past that thing and then it comes again. And we say, well, that's your major circuit in your brain. And that's been, been encoded usually early in life or later on. And you'll use the same tools in a more intensive way. So, for example, in the stress eating solution book, people come in and they rewire a food circuit. Okay, I'm going to go back over this in a minute. And then usually there's some kind of a mood that makes us overeat. You know, maybe we get really anxious or really numb or really on a false high. And then particularly with women, but with all of us, we need love. And any kind of slight difference in our, our relationship circuit, in our, our love circuit, so that we tend to merge with people or hide from people, that tendency, that knee-jerk reaction to do that, we can rewire. And lastly, the big one is the body circuit. Because we take in all the negative uh, messages from, from life, from the media, from everywhere, that our body needs to be a certain way. And so that separation from loving and having pride in our body no matter what, that's the last one. And after you've done all four of these, it's highly likely that you can not only go on any particular food plan that pleases you, there's some that are better than others, but that first step of getting your brain connected so that it's easier to release extra weight and that weight can stay on. This is the only method other than weight loss surgery that's shown lasting results so that after you're done with the program, the weight tends to stay off because we've dealt with the root cause.
that's pretty incredible now for folks listening and watching the name of the app is called brain-based health by ebt and again i'll have all the links and, and and availability as to where they can download it now you recommend them reading the book first and then downloading the app or is this something that folks do in unison it's best to do it in unison and the reason for that is that if you go back to what we're really talking about is empowering people to transform their life for all of us because everyone has stress and to use their brain really effectively if I'm trying to remember how to use an emotional tool because these are just simple emotional tools I first use them with children uh, but trying to bring it up into your mind that takes space in your mind it takes mind space and you don't have mind space to waste because when you use these tools, they're so powerful that you want to use everything inside of you in your conscious mind to connect with your body and to wait for your unconscious mind, the emotional brain, to bubble up some amazing wisdom. So we want you to use the app. I still use it. And of course, I know these tools by now. I use it because I, I want to free up my brain to just focus on my emotions and sensations that come up for me as I use the tools. So definitely use the app. That's the, that's the way to do it well. Okay. Um, I noticed um, that it was pretty, it was pretty an, an amazing experience because, and I want you to talk about this, please. Um, when they're using the app, they're going to be not thinking yeah. this but they're going to be talking out loud. Am I right? Like when I first did it, I was thinking it and you were like, no, you have to speak it, speak the answers verbally. Could you talk? And maybe if you want, you could show what the app looks like to some sure. folks this way. Sure. I, I can. So let, let me, I think I misspoke when I said that to you. Let me tell you the difference. The yeah. difference is that the thinking brain can't tell the difference between uh, whether you're really experiencing something or you're just bringing up the image. It can't. Okay. So, so like in the last, I got up at two o'clock in the morning. I'd like to write in the middle of the night, just a little personal quirk of mine. And I wasn't at one. I wasn't in that state of connection. So why bother writing? I've learned the hard way that if you write when you're not at brain state one, when you're more down here, what happens is you have to throw it all away or erase it. It's not very good. So I, I use the app myself. I just thought it in my mind. I want to add something to that. So essentially, this is self therapy privately. Okay. Because that's all a therapist does is connect with you emotionally, guide you a little bit, and try to get you on your resiliency pathways so that you learn, change, and grow and break up those other patterns that aren't working. You can't both be in resiliency and in stress at the same time. So if you get on this pathway, it passively changes those circuits from childhood or from the guy that broke up with me or the woman that did this or that, it breaks up those other circuits right before your eyes. So I just use it here. However, that said, one of the reasons that the literature on psychotherapy is rather uh, impressive is because humans need humans. This, this emotional brain is the social brain. It wants to be around other people. It wants to feel heard and seen and loved. And essentially the relationship that you're creating between your thinking brain Mm -hmm. And your your emotional brain by using this brain based health app and the program is a loving relationship. So essentially, we want love. So if you want to add benefit, then there are ways you can use it with other people in what we call a community connection. When you you can either speak it out loud or even better, call someone on the phone in your EBT group right. or go to coaching. And either way, it improves it. But all by yourself, you know, we are alone. We are born alone. We die alone. We are accountable to ourselves for what, how we live our lives, which is so scary, right? But that's the truth. So the, one of the purposes of brain-based health movement is that our current healthcare system is not set up to treat stress-induced problems. And even though there are medications, procedures, and devices that we can use for health and psychotherapy, they're all very helpful. But as long as you don't, we don't have control over our emotional brain, and 24-7, 365 days a week, be able to use the app to get out of that stress state, back to a state of connection, and then all those other therapies work that much better. Uh, so, so can you, when you're using the app, can you think the answers, or do you recommend speaking them aloud? What I recommend is EBT is fun. If it's not fun, it's not EBT. So one of the other issues is if you, you go in and you're going to have therapy session and you're just you know really serious and oh I need to go to the therapy well you know that's not what the emotional brain wants it wants you to have a good time it wants you to play 
it wants you to laugh, it wants you to feel really comfortable and seen. And so essentially, that's all you're doing is you are doing this for yourself and you're having fun with it. If it's not fun, then you do it a different way. If it's more fun, like I had fun with you yesterday, I was doing a, a, one of the cycles in this, uh, the tools in this method, and I was having a great time. I hope you were having a great yes, time. Yes, most definitely. I mean, that's why the connections are so much fun. But if you're doing it alone and it feels, sometimes you do it alone and you say, oh my gosh, I just connected to the deepest part of me. And I learned something about myself that would take me years in therapy, or maybe I would then have not the privacy I had, and I had that privacy for myself. That's valuable. But it's also valuable to be able to do it with other people and just be listened to without any advice, just listening. My partner, Walt, he's so great because I only met him six years ago. And he was overweight. He was taking blood pressure medication. He was taking some other medication for mood. And, you know, I just said, you know, I, I really like you, but, but, you know, I need to connect with you better not just when you're on your best behavior, but I need you to have, so he went out and got these tools and he says, he says, you know, you shouldn't tell people that it's fun. I said, but well, it is fun. So now he's lost 35 pounds. He's not on any medication. He says, he says, I owe you my life, Laurel. And I said, no, no, I think it's a, you owe the, all the scientists that made it possible to have EBT your life. So, you know, it really just keep it fun. If it feels good, do it. If it doesn't try something different. Use it differently, but right. it needs to be fun. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, based on my experience, my short experience using it, there, there are moments when you're answering the questions and you might feel, um, you know, a little sad while you're answering when it's asking you, like, what are you afraid of, or, you know, like, what's going on. So when you're talking about, but then as you're moving into it, you're feeling better. Yes. So you may start off feeling a little sad, but then as you go, you know, you're feeling better. What are you grateful for? So, yeah. you know, and, and it does, it's like a little awakening. It's like a little mini awakening at that moment that you need it. So I loved it. Let, I think let, me, let me give you an example, because this sure. is what I, I think I get a lot, of, a lot of people who are very thinking oriented and very successful use this method. And other people use it who are successful in their own way, but they've tried everything, every medication. They just, they just say, you know, come on, I have to get past this. Maybe I'll live with this for the rest of my life. And I say, you don't have to. It's just a wire in your emotional brain. And it's the most plastic part of your brain. But you need emotional tools to change an emotional wire. Right. And so what they say is, you know, I think that, um, why didn't I feel before? I said, because feelings, lightweight feelings that you have when you're at brain state one or two, when you're at low stress, they're useless. Mm. So we're, it was a big breakthrough. I remember I was part of that because EBT has really been at the forefront of emotional processing for a long time. But the issue is people started to say, oh, I feel sad that you were, you felt that way, or I feel lonely, or I feel guilty. And that is fine. But again, think of your brain as a chest of drawers. Okay, so here's your brain. You've got five different levels of stress. There's a, not only a different emotional pathway for each one, mm -hmm. but when you're at one, all your memories from brain state one are in the drawer, the top drawer, okay? And the other ones, when you were feeling bad, they're nowhere. You can't even, even be aware of them. And as you move to lower and lower places, once you get to brain state three, which is, again, pretty high, it's just a little stressed, all those memories of other times when you were a little stressed are hot and online. And they're being activated too. So every experience after birth is a multi-layered experience. So what people say is, I just don't know, I, I don't want to feel because if I start feeling, I'm going to fall apart and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get stuck and I'm going to get depressed or I'm going to get anxious or I'm going to get so hostile, I'm going to be violent. And you know what? That's what neuroscience says. It says that if you, and in fact, Freud did a lot of work on this, which is that if you just express, for example, anger, mm -hmm. once you're down in this state, when you're in the bottom drawers of your brain, which are not bad to go to, you want to dip down and go in that fourth and fifth drawer, because that's when you learn, change, and grow, and break up the old unconscious expectations. World changing so quickly now, everybody needs to break up old expectations on a body level, but then you spiral back up. You use your big 
big power highway, super highway of resiliency to spiral back up. That's the best case scenario. You do not want to stay in these states all the time because life is changing and you're not updating the bottom of your brain, new expectations, and that's what causes so much stress. So what happens is once you go down to three, the feelings get stuck. They don't flow. That's why that's what EBT is offering is an is a emotional pathway in the brain so they don't get stuck. They just flow from positive from negative to positive. So, for example, I had an old boyfriend who said to me one time, Laurel, I just can't feel because I, if I start feeling, I'm just going to get super hostile. And, and that's what the literature says. The feelings get stuck. They don't tell us how we feel and what we need. They make us feel worse. They make us more stressed. And so it was a number of years ago that I discovered this other way of doing it. And this is really the gift is that you can be at a pretty stressed state and the ideal state is four. And you can essentially express first complain and I'll show you how to do this. You got to complain. You got to say the situation is that what I'm most stressed about is and then you hit it with three hostilities, three angers and you express anger just three to six times. It takes maybe a few seconds. You know what that does? It clears away enormous amounts of stress and that's why swearing is so effective because when you, ex you, you protest and you say, I hate it that you're doing that, I can't stand it, just for a few minutes, you release so much stress that the thinking brain stays online. So you're in control. If you don't express it, you'll just be stuck down here and you won't know what to do and so you'll have to reach for food or something else an external way of coping because your brain's not going to help you out. With this tool, this major pathway in your brain, you, after anger, you express it. All of a sudden, you wake up and you say, oh my gosh, I feel sad. You say one sadness and feel it, one fear and feel it, one guilt. And guilt is not shame. It's just, gosh, I had some control. I had some power in that situation. What could I have done differently? What could I have learned? And once you do that, you'll go right to joy. You'll either find a circuit, an unconscious expectation that you can update, and go to joy, or you'll start feeling all these positive emotions. And again, our latest study is it's about one and a half to two minutes that people with practice can get on this pathway. Sometimes it takes four if it's really, really stressed. But then your whole day is different. You don't otherwise you're going to be stuck and trying to control everything and doing things you don't want to do. So doing this once can literally help somebody with the whole rest of their day. Well, this is what happens. If your set point is at four or five, your brain habit is down here, mm -hmm. and you do it once, you'll, you'll come up to a one state or a two state, and you'll say, what just happened? I have hope. If that could happen, I have hope. And then the brain will drag you back down again. And then you do it another time. And then your brain begins to learn that resiliency pathway begins a four, a four lane highway now. And it, it naturally moves up. And over time, the set point moves to one. So that's, and for example, if your set point's a little higher, all you do is get the app and read the book. And what's happening is you're saying, oh gosh, now I know how to do it. I can do it. So one of the ways to figure out your set point is start using the app. If right. it stays at one, that means your set point's higher. If it's a little lower, fantastic. You found EBT and you'll want to get into a group or do coaching or ask your doctor. Tell your doctor about uh, brain-based health. Tell him or her that the diseases we're treating with medications are really stress diseases. And if people don't have the, the tools to get out of stress on their own, empowered to get these tools and get out of stress on their own, even if they go to a great therapy session or, or have a procedure, They'll be back down here in the bottom sure. of the brain again, and more problems will come up. Now, how does this back. help for folks who binge eat or overeat due to, say, external forces? Say they're in a, you know, a bad marriage, or they're stressed out because they have five kids, and you know, it's it's coming externally. Like, does this help them to do this like once a day, twice a day? Like, how does that work? Well, the this is the issue: is that life is difficult. That's never going to change. But if we're down here at four or five, we can't bring out the best in us so we can take 
action and decide what support we need, whether that marriage is something that we're going to go forward in a new way, that we can change ourselves. And when we do change ourselves, typically the old relationship is over. And that's where you see if there's something worth staying for. So it doesn't take away the pain of life. But what surprises me over the years is that if you don't go down to a four or five and have some stress in your life, you do not mature as an individual. Right. So it's through the, the valley of our pain, that not staying stuck in it and, and having self-abuse and self-neglect and being zoned out, but having just the tools and the support so you can use the tools to get out of stress and then say, okay, I actually played a part in what's going on in my marriage. Or I have a really difficult child, but I could actually do it slightly different or get more support or get breaks more often so I could cope with it. But as long as the brain's down here, what we do is, you know, we eat, drink, spend, obsess, plan, analyze, and we really just need our joy back. All we need to do is move through that resiliency pathway. And even for a moment, we say, well, you know, it's not so bad after all. And if I hadn't gone through that, for example, I had a baby that died and I've been through divorce and I've taken care of, of both parents through very difficult illnesses where it was just heartbreaking, yeah. heartbreaking. You know what I mean? Where you just think, is this going to go on and on and on? And if I didn't have, if I didn't have these tools, I probably would have had health problems from all this stress. Yeah. It's stress I, so bad on your it's, health. So it's so bad. bad. And, and women in, in this age group of they're, they're taking care of their kids or their grandchildren. They're taking care of maybe their parents. They're trying to have a relationship with, with their spouse or their partner. And they have work and they have needs for creativity, for, for love, for vibrancy that need to be met. These are basic needs. The basic needs are, are safety, love, comfort, pleasure, or purpose. And let me just show you on my own brain, okay? Sure. If I'm at five, all I need is safety. If I'm at four, I need love. If I'm in three, I just need comfort. I just, but if, if my brain tells me the only way I get comfort is food, I'm going to have to eat a lot of food because it's not giving me the comfort I truly need. And then at two, I'm present and aware, but I need pleasure. We are pleasure-oriented humans. We have to be in joy. We need those moments of joy to, to refresh, to, to have zest for life. And then if we're at one, which is the goal of EBT, is keep using this tool and raise your set point. Don't let the stress in the world control you so that you start having all these stress-related problems. Fight back. You know, be part of this brain-based health movement because they're very simple tools. And essentially, when we're at one, we're really moving forward with clarity and purpose. And then the purposeful rewards are what rejuvenate us. I'm right. going forward out of integrity. I'm doing it out of authenticity. I'm doing it out of freedom. And that's why food is so important. And I know this, this particular book, there's a second book on stress overload. We wanted everyone to have a 30-day program to go with the app. But what's not known in our culture right now is the root cause of overeating and weight gain is not sugar. No kidding. Because you, all you hear about is the taboos of sugar. So it's not really like high carb, you know, diets or sugar, it's stress. Sugar is not good for you because it creates stress. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. it adds to your emotional and physical stress. So you're more likely to be in stress overload, but it's not the root cause. So let's say you went out and you said, okay, what I'm going to do, and because I was an emotional overeater, I was a stress eater and I spent years being miserable about it. And it made me so angry. Because essentially, I was, I actually became a nutritionist before I became a health psychologist because I thought, well, you know, I have this, this overeating problem. If I can figure out how to eat well, then I won't have a problem. Well, the fact of the matter is these circuits in the bottom of the brain are powerhouse circuits. They're fight or flight circuits. And so it's nice and important not to eat sugar and you will as much and you will notice that your stress level will go in, up, your appetite will go up. Your cravings will go up when you start eating a lot of sugar. But the root cause of why it is, is so hard to keep weight off is because these stress circuits are doing something amazing. The circuits at the bottom of the brain that are all about stress mm -hmm. are creating 
stress overload in your brain. Now, my friend Rob, Rob Lustig, who you probably know about, he's a, he's a dear friend of mine. And actually, I started in, at UCSF with treating obesity in children. And he ended, I ended up leaving and going on to family medicine and stress and doing uh, other, other work, developing EBT. And he came in and took the, the job I used to have. So we're really bosom buddies here. But anyway, and I love his work. In fact, his, his, his books are just phenomenal. And we recommend them to all EBT participants. But, you know, if, if, if we just did the, the, the food and we didn't go to this circuit underneath, first of all, we would be, until we got really into not having sugar so much, it would be really hard to get going on a diet. Most people aren't eating healthy because, number one, it, they're going up against the, the stress in their brain. Right. So it's too much. And then even if we lose weight, we'll regain it. And at first we won't, we'll be fine. But and this is what's so, so sad and is discouraging is when you think about losing weight, people think about what diet should I go into, onto. And I say to you, no. What you think is, I'm gonna get the EBT sc skills. So I have the brain-based skills so that I don't need the extra food. So whatever diet or program I choose, it's gonna work better and then after I get tired of the diet or whatever, and no one's going to avoid really tasty things for the rest of their life. That's ridiculous. You know, life is to be enjoyed. Then I will not, I'll be apt not to gain the weight back. Because if you look at even all the movies and films about, uh, uh, besides the science uh, about weight loss, people say, well, I was doing really, really, really well. And then my dog died. Right. It was <laughs> some stuff, trigger. Something went right on my brain. And, all of a sudden, I was back to doing what I did before, and I didn't know why I was doing it. It's because we're in the age of the emotional brain. Thinking is not enough, and by using the EBT tools, this app, you can take charge of that brain mm -hmm. and shut off that stress. But I want to tell you my story about eating, because, um, because I, this is why I wrote The Stress Eating Solution, mm -hmm. because this is so agonizing. First of all, in my practice, I have a private practice, and of course we have EBT providers all across the country. They, um, people kept saying that all these women would come in and they'd say, they, they, they weren't even, some of them, overweight at all. And some people had extra weight on, it doesn't really matter. What they were saying is, you know what? I uh, don't even tell my best friend about how I lose control of food at night. I wait for my kids and my husband or partner to go to bed. And then I go down and I, I have this love affair with the ice cream. And then I clean it all up just much like an alcoholic would. I clean it all up, throw the bottles out, throw the cartons out. And then I say to myself the next morning, I'm not going to do it again. And then I'm back doing it again. So it's the shame. It's the lack of freedom. It's the lack of control. The fact that you we feel bad about ourselves because we're overeating. And the fact is anyone's going to do it. If their brain's down here at four or five, they're either going to undereat or overeat. That's how the brain works. And so the stress is the problem and it's a wire in your brain. So these wires are, are unconscious. You know, if I said to you, oh, okay, Car Caroline, I actually lost my keys. And, and you'd say, oh, that's really sad. And I said, well, let me think. Um, uh, where are my keys? Oh my gosh, I left my keys next to the dog's leash. Mm. when I was going out on a walk. Well, when I remember that it's the dog's leash, I get this body feel that it's a memory coming up, okay? And what's difficult about the emotional brain is it's completely stealth. So I may be having a wire, because all that we do is controlled by wires in our brain. And all we do is shutting off the wire so we don't, so we stop being stressed and we activate a wire that gives us joy. And so, so what I'm saying is, uh, what happens is, all of a sudden, let's say I'm up, upstairs in the sofa, sitting around, doing nothing, I'm watching the television, everybody looks beautiful, and I don't feel beautiful, and then I start feeling a little bit hungry, and I see something on, the, um, on TV about food, and all of a sudden I go, bingo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some ice cream, I'm going to run, run downstairs, I, I'm probably hungry, oh yeah, I'm probably hungry, <laughs> and then I go down and I eat too much. If I were to do that, I wouldn't say to myself, it's not my fault. It's just a wire in my brain because I had no body feeling it was a wire. So my food circuit got encoded when I was 11. And even talking about it today uh, makes me sad because um, 
I didn't know that it wasn't my fault. I blamed myself for my overeating. I was being teased at school. I was 11 and I was, I was tall and people would make fun of my height. And uh, I, this one girl was a bully and I'd also, a number of things happened that day. I came home and I had a good mother, but I was so ashamed of the fact that I felt so bad and so I, I needed love, but I couldn't really get it. I didn't have the skills to get it. So I walk in the kitchen, there's three, you know, those packages of, of um, cinnamon rolls, you know, the kind with the big white. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a package of them there. I just broke it open and I eat it. it and I, knew, I felt bad about it, but I didn't know that this is what had happened in my brain. Here's what happened. I had a fight or flight circuit in my brain, a fight or flight because I felt so rejected at school and so ashamed of myself. And then I had this little, little circuit that was, oh, I eat food. Okay, it's a little measly circuit with this big, huge circuit. And when the two were activated at the same time, the fight or flight drive was incorporated into the into food. And from that day on, and I had no idea about the science of this, I had a fight or flight drive to overeat sugar. Wow. And it was right down here. And this, this is the other thing. You won't believe this. What happens is the circuit gets activated even with a little bit of stress after that. And all of a sudden we're like possessed and we, or we're, or we're numb and we just want to eat or we're on a false high. Oh, I think I'd like some food. That's, those are all stress related emotion states. And we go and we get the food and food does calm us down. It's just, you have to eat a lot of cookies to really calm down effectively. It's not the emotional processing is what the brain wants us to do, you know, the EBT tools. But if we use food instead, we have to eat a lot of food that then causes more stress in the long right. The short term, it calms us. So we're back to brain state one or two. And we forget that, uh, that this all happened. And we think we could use just positive thinking or mindfulness. That or works, something right? like I know it doesn't because this is this is called this is survival brain. So essentially, I went on this pathway to become a nutritionist. I became a, a faculty member at UCSF in nutrition. I was tackling nationally obesity in children, and I said this cognitive behavioral diet exercise thing is not working for these kids. And so I went into the library. And fortunately, this is why if you're a researcher, always publish your research because a little old lady psychiatrist from Baylor named Hilda Brook had published this study in 1940 that said this is childhood obesity but remember there's no difference in the brain between children and adults and obesity and overeating from any other excess or stress related problem whether it's anxiety depression drinking whatever that is they're all the same in the brain right or very similar so I what what happened is I, I lived with this this circuit in my brain and I I said to this this research said uh, what's going on is emotional disconnection in these kids. The parents and the kids are not emotionally connecting in a way that's healthy. So the kids aren't getting the nurturing and the limits they need. Their brain is disconnected and they're looking for a safety substitute or a love substitute. That or makes a, so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. My circle was I get my love from food, but it could be any of those things. Sure. So essentially I thought, well, you know, I was young at the time and you know how you're kind of you know, young and a little dumb. And like you say, I said, okay, that's not a problem. I'll just teach emotional connection skills. And I had no idea that what was going to happen was that essentially this, this, these kids started learning the same tools as are in this app. And what they did was they, this mother came to me and she said, it was kind of like when Harry met Sally, she, they said, I don't know what you gave my daughter with these emotional tools, but she stopped overeating and uh, she wants to just go out and play. And I want some of what she got. I want what she has. And so I began to develop this method for adults and then for all problems. But it's essentially, that's what it was, is we didn't know at that point when I, that little girl, I still remember her, the 10, 10 year old, the little brown curly hair, they said, what did you do? But she doesn't want the extra food. The, the brain science had not been done, and it wasn't done until 2010, to show what had happened to that little girl. And what had happened is she had found her resiliency pathway, she stopped connecting with food, and she, was, she had trained her brain to get to joy, 
and she didn't want it after uh, anymore. She didn't want the extra food. So the issue is we want freedom, we want joy, eat healthy, but essentially, as long as you're not disconnected from ourselves, the brain's gonna find a way to make you feel better, to make you feel right. safe, comforted, and loved. And the easiest way for all humans, because we have to eat, to do that is overeating. And what EBT does is give you a new pathway in your brain that says, I get that love, I get that comfort from inside me, and then I can eat healthy, and it's no big deal. Because I'm not asking the food to give me something it can't give me. Right, right. Now, I'm going to be showing screenshots of what the app looks like. But maybe you can just give us a quick demo of how someone, <clears throat> say they are having this craving. Say it's 11 o'clock at night and they're getting this ice cream. Yeah. Freak out. They need to have, like, they're in that moment. Now, what would they do from there? Show us exactly what I'll show you do. exactly what to do. And, and do, can you see my app like this or no? So the first thing you have to do is this is why <laughs> mindful awareness is important as a first step. And EBT moves beyond that because we've got to go to the bottom of the brain. We can't just stay up here. Right. First thing you do, she would say, OK, I know that there's this resiliency pathway in my brain that gets me from stress to joy. I think I want to overeat, but uh, I'll just it only takes a couple minutes. I'll give it a try. Okay. And then if I give it a try and it doesn't work, I'm going to go eat, right? Never, never, never prevent yourself from doing that. So I go, essentially, you say, um, take a deep breath. Let's do that. Would you do it with me? Sure. Take a deep breath. Okay. And then gently assume body at one. Now, just notice what's happened. Put your shoulders back, your chin, your chest out, your chin slightly up. And even take the corners of your mouth and, and just stretch it back a little bit toward your ears and crinkle your eyes. And you just reduced your cortisol level by up to 25%. I mean, That's so crazy. Everything here is based on neuroscience and physiologically. We're getting rid of physiologic stress, stress inside. Okay. And now we're going to do what we all needed as children. I didn't get it necessarily, but to be seen and loved. Okay. So we say... Warmly observe yourself in the present moment. So you're not really meditating. You're just like looking at yourself and saying. Yeah, you're saying, there she is. There's Carol Ann. Right. Gosh, her life is really busy right now, okay? But just that little bit. It takes a few seconds. Okay. That's called decentering. And then you're ready to go. And you're at this point where you can actually, you're connected enough so you can identify your stress level. Now, uh, of course, we want you to have all five st sets of, of tools. We want you to have, there's five resiliency pathways in the brain. We want you to have all of them. So if you're in any stress level, you know how to get back to one. Okay. Let me just clarify. So depending on the person's emotions at that moment, they're going to choose the number between one and five. Now, each one of those takes them to a different thing in the app. So it's not the same like in other words if i'm feeling great and i choose number one what prompts me next is very different than if i choose number five okay, okay. just so folks and understand. the great part the great part of this is we used to really put a lot of energy into teaching each of these tools we still do in this book you'll see in the stress eating solution you'll see that you want to learn about it but essentially if, if you don't guess the right the right number mm -hmm. the tool's not going to work and the app sends you back to look at it again so you've learned that that's, you're not at that stress level. You're at, so you're always learning. There's nothing you can do with this app where you're not successful. Because every time you use it, you're going to, okay. So what we're looking for is most times when we're in, in that state, is this, is this right? Can you yes. see it? Okay. Yes. This, this, you want to be at four. I mean, you, you know, you say, Laurel, why are you telling me you want to be de definitely stressed? Because all the circuits that make us chronically stressed, overreact have stomach aches, want to overeat, all of these are in the fourth or the fifth drawer of the brain. Okay. If you happen to be in the fifth drawer really overwhelmed, you use that tool for a minute or two to calm the brain down and you go to that four state. That four state is golden. Okay? And so, so if for somebody that doesn't know if they're a little stressed or say definitely stressed, how would you define that before you click? Because 
there was a moment when I wanted to choose definitely stressed, but then I thought, well, maybe I'm not really that badly stressed. Maybe I'm just slightly stressed. Like, how would you guide? Right. Some? Number one, there is something to learn. And I will show you how to, how to make those decisions. But in general, just play with the app. Okay. Have fun with it because your brain will teach you. You're, this is a completely self-instructional app. It really is. You can you can learn. But let me just give you the definition so that yes. you can. Okay. The definitions. Okay. When you're at one, you feel present and aware and your brain is really connected. That's And remember, what's going on in the emotional brain controls every cell of your body. So when you're at one, you have a chemical surge that's healing. Okay. When you're at five, you have a chemical surge surge that's harmful so you're you are really self-medicating with with inside you all the time so we're self-medicating well we're damaging ourselves when we're at four or five because every cell is affected by that that's what causes premature aging it causes the major uh, diseases and conditions that cause death in adults which are cancer diabetes and heart disease all of the little things you have where you have you pull, you know, you notice that you have back aches and you have, you have, um, you know, their heads, you know, they're all caused by stress plus some environmental changes, but the root cause that's modifiable is right. stress. Okay, so you want to be at one, at least touch there, and then go back down because you want to refresh your emotional architecture. And the issue is that you're feeling present, aware, and there's a slight, slight glow in your body. That's your reward centers being activated because you know you're of purpose. And so we need the glow because if we don't get the glow in a healthy way, we're going to get it in a hedonic pleasure or an artificial way that tends to be addictive. Right. So one is really medicinal. Two, you feel present and aware, but there's no glow in your body. And that's why even if you're at two, use the tools to get to one. Okay. If you're at three, and if you don't, and also I reserve the right in my own life, sometimes I don't want to be stressed. So this is not to be always at one. It's to have the freedom to choose whether you're going to spiral up to one or whether you just want to sit in your stress for a while. There's nothing wrong with that. That's your choice. We have freedom. Okay. Number three, this is really, really important because you start to feel a little scattered. Maybe you're thinking too much or a little bit anxious or you can't quite get your thoughts together. This is definitely stress. You know you're stressed because you feel bad or you're having drives that you don't really want. And when you're at five, it's overlot, overwhelmed, lost, feel abandoned. And so you'll have your own thumbprint of signs for it, but essentially those are the five levels of stress in the brain. So what I want you to know is there's something that's neurophysiologic. Remember that psychology used to be psychological. Yeah. Anything has biological roots. So EBT is a new form of self-therapy, and if you go to a coach to use it, if your therapist uses it, he or she will help you use this even more effectively. But it's all biologically based. Okay. So health is biologically based in these circuits that we're playing with now. That's why brain-based health is so important that everyone have these tools. Anyone who's stressed out, and that's everyone, needs these tools. And But there's something else I want to share, share with you that's extremely important because it helps with self-judgment. Because one of the worst things that we can do is judge ourselves and that's what we do because we don't know why we're so stressed why why do i keep so overeating? i mean i know this is damaging now i have diabetes or i keep drinking or i keep yelling at my i tell myself i'm going to be patient with my child i can't do it or with my parent that's sick i just can't hold it together it's not you and this is what i'm, I'm i want to share with you is it in these two states here one and two mm -hmm. okay in one and two you're running wires so the world is coming into your brain, your stuff from your body is coming into your brain, and your thoughts are coming into your brain. And if it comes into your brain and activates a circuit that's a self-correcting circuit, mm -hmm. you go to one or two. And you've had that feeling. It's kind of like being uh, in your house and you have the air conditioning and you have the heat. So you stay in a certain range, and it's not hard. You know, you're at one, two, or three, or like that. Okay, it's just fine. So when you're in, it's called homeostasis. When you're in a homeostatic circuit, it, it takes you through stress, kind of keep it together even though it's hard, and you're back to joy. Okay? And that's why life is so manageable. Okay, let me tell you, there's another kind of circuit. And it was shown in 1988 uh, by a researcher 
at, uh, at in the East Coast at Penn that in fact these other kind of circuits start activating and they're the root cause of all the problems. Let me show you. Sure. It's that just by if, if your circuit, let's say with food, with me, you know, I had that food circuit, I get my love from food, and then this fight or flight drive would come in. So if that's going on, the thinking brain goes offline. And I am going to do whatever that circuit tells me to do. I have no control because my thinking brain, my conscious mind, is out to lunch, basically. Sure. <laughs> Maybe right. have dessert. You never know. So what's happening in these circuits here is there are no shutoff valves. Okay? They go to extreme. They will do whatever it takes for you to survive. They, it th thinks that you, in fact, are going to die, and you are going to follow that circuit in the brain no matter what. Like, I remember first thinking, oh, no, I'll eat sensibly all day. And then a circuit would go off. And then all of a sudden, I don't care what I should eat. I know what I should eat. I'm not going to do it. Right. Because these, these circuits control moods. Like I get stuck in, let's say you get stuck in depression or hostility. or They have no shutoff valves. And medicines don't cure them. So is this essentially shutting that valve off? Yes. When you do a check-in, so shutting only, that valve. The only way that you can shut it off is to be with someone else and borrow their thinking brain so you can have someone there with you so you can calm it down. That's why people need people. Even using EBT, it helps. But the idea is that unless you emotionally shut it off, mm -hmm. it won't shut off. Thoughts won't do it. Positive self-talk won't do it. Being mindfully aware won't do it. Even relaxation doesn't do it because it takes about a half an hour to three hours to relax when one of these circuits are being activated. But emotions do it in a couple of minutes. That's why we want everyone to have these tools. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Go ahead. So here we are. And I'm now in four. Happy day. Because I get to be at four. That's the, my brain's still functioning pretty well. And yet I know that I want to go to the refrigerator. Right? And I'm already imagining what kind of ice cream I'm going to, to use. Okay? okay. Just hold your phone up a little higher. Okay. Like that? Up that way. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is this is called a, a smorgasbord. When you're at four, you have three different things that four can, these tools can do for you. If you just have like situational stress, like you're just too overloaded with stuff, you know, the, the guests are coming and then you get the deadline at work, you're really not activating an old circuit, you're just overloaded. Right. And you feel negative. So you put push, be positive. Okay, so if you wanna be positive, you, it's situational stress. It'll take you right on this pathway. The first half of these tools are all the same. It's just how we finish it off that di it differs. Okay? okay. And then let's say you're just feeling it's just bad all over. You feel like, oh, I'm a bad person. I don't have any power. I have to be perfect. That's actually a circuit in the brain encoded early in life that tells you that you are bad. You have to be perfect. You are not worthy. You have no power. And those are really annoying. And they really create a lot of stress. And you can turn those off if you press that button. Okay. Okay, feel better. You feel bad, now we're gonna feel better. And the last one is the most popular. These two are the most popular. This one, because you can use that 15 times a day if you want to, it sure. really works. And this one is really great at discovering why you do what you do and how to stop. So it's gonna actually take you through those um, it's going to take you and open up your brain and I'm going to do it for you without the app right now. Okay. I'm going to do it for you. Okay. And this is the most, most common circuit for food. Okay. So what I'm going to do, watch what I do. I'm going to go and, and you can sh show the app, but I want to just look at you and, and, and express it to you. And again, as I was doing it, I'd have the app because I don't want to take up my brain space, but I'm going to do it differently now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is for all people, all you have to do is say a few words with your thinking brain. It's called a lead-in. And then you do the hardest part. You don't think. Okay, you don't think. You pause. Okay, And during that pause, this magnificent transformative brain, the emotional brain, opens up and it gives you a message. It bubbles up some words. If you do it from your head, it doesn't work. If you pause and wait and just trust your body and wait for something to bubble up, the brain is connecting and you get into your unconscious mind. It's okay. the unconscious mind that we have to change or we won't change the primitive drives like to overeat. Okay, so this is a, watch what I'm, watch my technique. I'm just going to say a series of 
lead-ins that have been carefully developed over the last about 20 years okay. to make them simpler and more powerful. So I'm going to say, the situation is, and I'm going to complain, okay? You've got to complain. Women are told they shouldn't complain. They need to complain. And then we're going to go into anger. Again, women are, set, women are told you can't have anger. If you can't have anger, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to end up depressed because yes. sadness is going to turn into depression. Right. You're going to worry and worry yourself to death because, because your fear, which you, you could just feel and let fade, it gets stuck on. So you're panicked, on edge, or worried. And your guilt, which is really good. I feel guilty I did that. Maybe next time I'll try something different. You know, wow, that's my power. Instead right. of shame, you know. So it, it, you need the anger. Only three to four of them, but have at it. And it's going to open that circuit in the brain so it can change. Okay. And then I'll do the, the feelings, and then I'll move forward. So... This, I'm going to find out why I overeat. That's what I'm going to do. So it's no mystery. And I'm just going to okay. play the typical one, okay? Okay, the situation is, I'm totally and completely, it's coming from my body, it's, I'm totally and completely out of control with my food. I tell myself I'm not going to overeat, and then I overeat. And I swear it. I swear it. And then what happens is, I something happens and all of a sudden I have no willpower whatsoever and once I start eating I cannot stop until I'm stuffed notice I said a few sentences what happened I pause because my emotional brain says the wisdom of the emotional brain the beauty of it it wants us to heal but we have to use our emotions not our thoughts it stops and now I pause remember the pause is the whole thing Yes. Most beautiful machinery, the most elegant machine on the face of the planet, we're not using. These tools give us the opportunity to use it and use it well. Okay? So I'm going to pause. I'm going to let my emotional brain do the work, do a little dance, and it's going to find what I'm most stressed about because it wants to go to what bothers me the most because it cares about me. And if it finds what, what really bothers me, it's going to decrease the threat mm -hmm. and I survive and I will thrive. So of all that, what I'm most stressed about is I have no control over my eating. Okay, now I'm going to stay on topic and I'm going to be really angry. I mean, you can use expletives because you want to be sure. as, as you can. I'm not going to right now, but don't hold back. You want right, to be right. Let it rip. Out. <laughs> Let out that stress. Okay, okay. So what I'm most stressed about is I'm I'm completely out of my my of control of my food. I feel angry that I'm out of control. I can't stand it that I try so hard. I try so hard and I'm still out of control. I hate it that I say one thing, I do the rest, and then I'm back to square one. I gain the weight back. I'm out of control. I have no shame about it. I just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. I have no sense of control at all. My mind shuts off again. It's all natural. It's perfectly natural. Wow. The circuit of the bottom of the brain that's triggering me to overeat has now unlocked. Now, this is really important. When people tell you you should always stay at one and you should be compassionate, this is such bad information. And the reason is, is that the circuit down here will never go away. You will have it the rest of your life because the brain thinks it saved you and that my, that my brain thought that I would only get my love from food and it's going to hold on to that memory unless I just for a nanosecond, just for a moment, go down to the same level of stress I was in when it was encoded. Mm -hmm. And what happens is this string of neurons, just think of these neurons, have synaptic connections. And those synaptic connections become fluid. And when they become fluid, if I feed it a new idea, a new experience, not insight, knowledge, planning, or decision making, but an experience of a new idea, those circuits will reconfigure in the hippocampus and when I sleep the next night, in fact, they will begin to rewire that circuit until that circuit breaks and I no longer need the extra food. That's the point, okay? How long does it typically take for, because I mean, I've read, you know, different theories about that, but in your estimation, how long would it take to rewire a really bad habit like binge eating or? Okay, well, over there's, two, there's two parts of it. Number one, every circuit's different. And we, and the more intense you are in using the tools, the faster it rewires. For example, in our EBT community, brain-based health, 
we actually had participants come to us and say, can't you just give us a 30-day program where we could go for a half an hour a day with a couple other people and a provider and go through this book in a way that you have support, you have accountability, you right. have emotion, and they they essentially, most people break their circuit, okay? And, if, if, and at least they weaken it so much that they're not fighting themselves anymore. So essentially, every circuit's different. And one of the things that you want to do is you want to understand that when you rewire that circuit, you're going to know yourself exactly why you did what you did. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel compassion and love for yourself. Right. And you're going to rewire it into something that really matters to you. Like, I, I'm, let me just, fin I'll finish the little, the little demo yeah. and you can see. So I say to myself, okay, um, I feel, I feel, then it's sadness. Notice how it was really big and explosive with the anger. Mm -hmm. Get that anger out really quickly. And then all of a sudden, I notice that I'm feeling better. I'm at brain state three. And the brain wants me to get to one. And that's what it's going to do right now. It always gets to one. Wait till you see. So I say, I feel sad that I struggle so much. And you feel the sadness until it fades. You slow it down. You don't just go, I feel sad that this and I feel sad. No, 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 no. Because you're really trying to connect with the deepest part of yourself. We're having a connection to ourselves instead of the food. Mm -hmm. I feel afraid that, notice I'm waiting for something to bubble up. That I'll be 90 years old and still gorging on ice cream. Or still needing the food and restraining myself. And really making it a, a tyranny, a tyranny feel afraid that I'll, it'll never go away. I'll be overeating the rest of my life. And feel it until the fear fades. And then guilt. Guilt is, it's really done at that point because now guilt is saying, okay, how am I going to go forward? I face my fear. How am I going to go forward? I feel guilty that I keep on overeating. Okay. So I feel guilty. I keep overeating. And I overeat because my emotional brain forces me to overeat. When that circuit gets activated, the cortisol, the, the, uh, all the chemicals that make us gain weight, feel lethargic, mm -hmm. uh, feel like we're just never going to be able to get out of this horrible spiral, start, start flowing. Okay? So I say, I feel guilty that I keep on overeating. And then you say, oh my gosh, now it's all about love. Of course I keep overeating. Because my unreasonable expectation is it's encoded by just a momentary change in my life. It wasn't my fault. It, w it w went in there without my permission. It's being reactivated for decades without my permission. It's still happening. Because my unreasonable expectation is I get my, and it's a fundamental need, could it be safety, love, survival, uh, security, protection, comfort, uh, existence, uh, worth, self-worth, whatever that is, I get my, the most common one, safety mm. from food. That means overeating. And you say, or you say, oh my gosh, that rings true. That's why I've been doing it. It's not up here. A thought is coming out of my body and it's this realization. Of course I would be overeating because I have this circuit with all these chemicals that are making me eat, activated. And of course I wouldn't stop because the food's not going to give me safety. So I keep doing it over and over again. Do you want me to give you the short version of how we, we change it? It's right sure. on the app. Okay. So now that I know what the problem is, it's not me. It's not my behavior. It's a circuit in my brain. I say, okay, I get my safety from food. Right in spot, right on the app, it will tell you what to do. And it will say, okay, we're going to take that expectation. And now these, these neurons are loose. And we're going to reshape them with a different idea. So we're going to juxtapose it with a new idea. And then we're going to encode a new circuit that is even better than the old one. The brain just can't have an old memory broken up. We have to be able to go to something that's even better than food or the brain will never allow us to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, uh, I now, ha I know now that I get 
my safety, safety from food, overeating food. Let's just say overeating. I get my safety from overeating. Then you confront it very, very slowly because we don't want to scare the reptilian brain because it really wants to keep this circuit. We don't want to upset it too much. Mm -hmm. Let me just say, I can not get the safety I need from overeating. Again, I cannot, I cannot get the safety I need. I can, it's going to sound ridiculous in a moment. I cannot get the safety I need from overeating. Even if I overate all day and all night for the rest of my life, it would actually not give me, might make me have diabetes, might make me gain weight, might make me hate myself, whatever it is, but it wouldn't give me the safety. That crosswire in my brain said it was getting safety. It wouldn't give me the safety that I need. And then you need to essentially make fun of it. This is very important. You, remember, it's gotta be fun. Okay, so that's ridiculous. I can't get the safety I need from overeating. I can't get the safety and that's totally completely ridiculous. And it takes away all the shame and it makes you feel really powerful. That's totally ridiculous. That circuit is like crazy. I can't believe it. But then we have to go to joy and encode the nerve circuit. I can get my safety. Well, I don't know where I get my safety. I can get my safety from, and you learn how to do this in the book. In the Stress Eating Solution book, it shows you how to construct this new expectation. I can get my safety and it's always the same thing. We only get our true needs met by starting with ourselves. Just like in the airplane where they say, put the mask on yourself and then you, yes. so even with intimacy, it means that the first thing we do is connect deeply with ourselves. So we're a whole person and we can go into intimate relationships and, and still maintain who we truly are and not just surrender to other people. Right. Or be scared of intimacy that we distance, okay? So I get my safety from connecting to the deepest part of me and probably eating healthy. What's my reward? The higher order reward? Vibrancy, freedom, sanctuary. So something, some reward for doing it. So I'm going to say it again. I'm just going to do this. This Now you'll learn to do this through the book and you'll use the app. The Stress Eating Solution book, you'll, you'll use it that way. But you want the app because it makes it easier. So I say to myself, every time I get that ice cream message, that I, well, maybe I'll go down and just, no one's up, no one's up right now. I can do it by myself. I say to myself, take my app. It's right here. Say, I, my unreasonable expectation is I get my safety from overeating food. And remember, this is in the unconscious mind, not the conscious mind. I cannot get my safety from overeating food. That's ridiculous. I can't get my safety from overeating. That's totally and completely ridiculous. I get my safety from connecting to the deepest part of myself and probably eating healthy. And what's my reward? Vibrancy. Wahoo. Okay. So by in a couple minutes, you're back to joy. That joy, you're in, you've used your resiliency pathway and your beautiful emotional brain. You've strengthened that resiliency pathway. Now, maybe instead of being a little path, it's a couple a couple of lanes, you've weakened that food circuit, you've raised your brain's habit, so it's more in connection and joy and less in stress, you've raised your set point, and the craving shuts off. The craving That's incredible. That's incredible. I'm so excited for folks to be able to download this app and get your book and give it a try. Now, you have a community as well online, and I did join up, and it looks like a wonderful community to get that support, right, that you need. Yeah. And you also have, what, counseling sessions and things like that available? Okay, so we, we have the full smorgasbord. Starting, you come in and get a take try out the tools membership so you can get the app and you can get some support there. And then you upgrade to having the whole program. And that program is a community with, with forum boards and there's drop-in workshops and there's messaging support. Typically, that's what people do the first month. And then after that, they say, gosh, I'm really going to get serious about this. So I need to be in a, a small community because remember, this is the emotional brain right? It needs to be with other people. And so we've learned that the number of people is six. It's average. That's great because it's small and private. And nobody knows, you know, who you are, but right. you're very close over the phone. And then a provider to guide you through it. And they meet once a week 
or you do an intensive every day, or a lot of people want coaching. So you come in and I just, like I said, I did coaching all day uh, and our providers are health professionals who are really trained in this method and they use it in their own life, believe me. And so essentially you just get on the phone and it's 25 minutes and you say, well, let, let me help you find your circuit. Let me help you develop a plan for how you're going to rewire that circuit. Wow. So you don't feel alone because the emotional brain wants love and connection and that's why we have the community. And that's wonderful to have that support community for folks. Well, thank you so much, doctor. I will make sure that I put all the links to your community, to the app, to your book, so that folks can check it out for themselves. And in closing, any last parting words that you want to give folks? Yes. Please become part of the brain-based health movement. We are suffering as a country, and not only is health going in the wrong direction, everything you see that's extreme comes from the fact that we have not taught our citizens that they have an, a, a resiliency pathway in their brain they can use this app and move from stress to joy out of that whole terrain of stress and change their health and the quality of their lives and the ability to control their well-being. So tell your doctor about the brain-based health movement. Become a leader. At this point, this is still a new movement. You can become a leader in this field just by using these tools and sharing it with your friends. Be the first in your family to use it and help us change the trajectory of what's happening in our country so that stress doesn't control us. What controls is that state of connection and purpose and joy. That sounds wonderful. And if they have any questions, can they reach out to you via email or how do you recommend to folks? Getting Just go to the website, which is ebt.org. And I welcome you to connect with me personally. My email is laurel at ebt.org. I'd love to talk with you, but go to our website, get this app, and become part of this movement for brain-based health. We don't have to put up with stress overwhelming us. We can actually use the moments of stress to go down to the bottom of our brain, update our expectations of life, spiral up, and become more of purpose and more of joy. Oh, amen to that. <laughs> Thank you again so much, Dr. And We'll be back to talk to you again in the future, I'm sure of it. Well, I, I love your work, Carol Ann. Thank you so much for including me. Of course. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.